Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, the head coach with me, Daniel. It's part 14 today and we finish season two in style with Kevin Druids. We're back for the final game of the league season, a celebration of finishing second place, which after last year and those of you that have been following from the start will know just how big an achievement that is. And then, thanks to possibly one of the most fortunate runs we've ever had, we get to the Welsh Cup final against TNS. Of course, they'll be the heavy favourites. We are likely to be runners-up. But it is a chance officially at our first trophy. And maybe that, combined with qualifying for the European qualifiers, is something that will attract the attention of another club. So if I'm hoping that this series is about to change and get very big very quickly. If you're looking forward to finding out if it does, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. Double uploads this week, Hemel Hempstead 11.30, the head coach half three. And then from next week, daily videos at 3.30, as well as FM Mobile and Cricket 22 later in the month as well. But a massive thank you for your support as always. You can catch up with anything you've missed in the eye above as well as the Twitch channel. But let's have a look at what's been happening in terms of results since you were last with me and also what Ben Williams has been doing on the contract front. So if we start with schedule, we've got loads of games to get through and we did have a little bit of a sticky patch in the middle, as you can see, against the three toughest rivals. We'll get through the games we played first. You're with me for Connors Key. We played Barrytown United and 1-2-1, Cody Roberto and Chris Baker. The comeback kings were back. It was a 91st minute winner from Baker. And this is just the start of showing that everyone contributes. Stanton set the goal up, another one of the substitutes. A home to Bala, a 1-0 win, 75th minute goal from substitute and January signing Jake Cassidy. He contributes as well. And you'll notice here an injury to Pavel Vieira, which is part of the reason for next month. The other part comes a couple of games later because we won 2-0 at home to Haverford West in the Welsh Cup quarter final. We did rest a couple of players, not a huge amount. It was Nick Roberts and Cody Roberto who got one apiece again very late on. So maybe we're becoming a physically imposing side as well, fitness-wise. Coaches have to take credit for that if that's the case. Away to TNS, the start of a poor month, thanks to another injury. Daniel Malone off and a month out injured for him. So he was missing for all of these defeats. He went off quite early in that game as well, but we still almost clung on. An 87th minute win up for Henry Francis, the Arsenal lone player. And we just couldn't get into it, but a really good effort regardless. A 3-2 defeat followed at Cardiff Met Uni. We opened a scoring with Jake Cassidy. We then let in three quick goals and were all over the place. Honestly, five or six wouldn't have flattered them at half time. In the end... We actually had a grandstand finish. Jake Cassidy got a goal in the 81st minute and Cody Roberto had a goal ruled out for offside in stoppage time. Against Connors Key at home, we struggled. We were really poor against them. And obviously we saw the great result against them in the last episode. But generally, they're the side we've struggled against the most. A second half goal and a backs to the wall display. Again, it probably could have been more. But into the big game, the Welsh Cup semi-final. The one I really wanted to win. And we did. Cody Roberto with a first, Nick Roberts with a brace in the first half and a late goal in the second. And we got through comfortably against one of the relegation threatened sides and made it to the final against TNS, which we'll see today. Back-to-back 3-1 -back wins followed again. Barrytown United at home, Roberto with two, Roberts with one. Former Bangor City hero from FM21, even Press, got the goal against us. Still a very good player in this game. Not quite as physical as he was last year. And in a way to Barla Town, a 3-1 victory. It was Edge from the penalty spot, Roberts and Cassidy, who is very much becoming a star of the show now. So I'm looking forward to seeing if his contract gets renewed. I really hope it does. So let's go and have a look at what's been happening contract-wise. Not a huge amount that we've got to talk about. We will look at a youth intake in between the two matches, but the fact none of them are in the first team probably answers it in comparison to last year. So in terms of contracts, Kane Lewis has signed another year now. We were really worried about his situation, so I'm delighted with that. But I'm worried that none of Roberto and Cassidy have. Vieira's had an injury he's declining. He's on big money. And in fact, him and Bio are the only two on over 200 quid a week. So I kind of understand it. But if Cislovic goes, we have no right winger. And if Cassidy and Roberto go, we have no second striker. Given the amateur players we've got as well, I would really like a few of those to be tied up. Particularly Cassidy, Roberto and Vieira. We'll see if it happens or not, though. Let's go and get into the first game, the warm-up event in today's episode. It is Cardiff Met Uni at home, a side that are fourth place in the league, 19 points behind us. But what a job we've done to get 63 points. If we do get anything out of today's game, 
We will have got two points a game over the course of the season, which is incredible as the best of the semi-pro teams in the league. We've got Malone and Vieira back to fitness, so that is looking much more positive. We're going to go for our first 11 and try and build it. The only one I might give a rest is Cody Roberto, because Cassidy's been doing quite well off the bench. He is building fitness, and I want him to get a new deal. So he will come in today. The rest of the squad, it virtually picks itself. Do I rest Charlie Edge? Because he is someone who has been injury prone in this save. Probably the only player we've had who is. Let's do it. Joe Stanton on as well. That's the team. We've got Ben Coley in goal. Peters and Lewis, the fullbacks, with Edwards and Lever at centre half. Cieslovic and Stanton coming in on the left wing. Vieira and Malone in central midfield. Malone, now the best player at the club. Coley, the keeper, improving as well. He deserves a mention for that. And up front, it's Jake Cassidy with four goals now who partners Nick Roberts. Will he get tied down to a new deal? Or are we going to go back to summer problems after this season? Who knows, if we get into Europe and maybe win the cup against the odds, might even get a new job, surely. Let's go and have a look at the first game though. Let's try and finish the league season in style. So you've seen the changes that have been made by us, just the two. There's another former hero in that Cardiff Met Uni side, Ben Erickson. We had Hurley on in our banger save last year. A few good players on the bench, some decent ones in the squad as well. Jordan Williams, who our director of football tried to sign in January. Cardiff Met Uni beat us to the deal. But I think we've got an opportunity today. Cardiff Met Uni, this is their last game of the season. Unless they've got a European playoff, which I'd suspect they will now. And we've got an opportunity to go into the cup final in style, keep that unbeaten run going. And for me, it's just paramount we don't lose here. As Cieslovic picks the ball up on the right-hand side to Kane Lewis. Kai Edwards goes long. Nick Roberts flicks down. Falls to Cieslovic on the right-hand side. Really improved this half of the year, so it would be a shame if he left in the summer. As Stanton shoots from distance. Nearly made a right impact coming in for Charlie Edge. Second minute. Thunderous shot just over the bar. And against the back three, we stay nil-nil. We've certainly had the better start. Well, it turns out the first two minutes were the peak of the half. We've restricted Cardiff Met Uni to nothing. We've had more shots, more shots on target, more possession even, but no highlights since that shot over the bar. It doesn't bode well in terms of scoring goals, but you've seen often this season, it's one of the things I've prided my side on, is having a balanced mentality, making sure we don't concede many, and then trying to win it late on. Though it's a set piece here, Cardiff Met Uni rattle the woodwork. Williams right side of the box, it's not over yet. Back to Watts, blocked behind for a corner. In fact, Lever heads it out for a throw, good defending. But this is our mentality. We haven't got great players who can go all guns blazing for 90 minutes. We stay in the game, then the last half an hour, if we're behind or we're level, we try and push. And so far this season, it's been brilliant for us. And we're going to do the same again here. We're going to go positive with about 25 to go. And we're going to think about a couple of changes, because I think we've got the tools on the bench to make a difference. Cassidy, not had a great game to date. So Cody Roberto, one of the top scorers, will come on. Joe Stanton's actually having a good match. So I think we might leave Charlie Edge off. Vieira coming back to fitness, struggling a bit. So Chris Baker on for him. And then at fullback, do I take off Lewis or Peters and bring on Edge or Yolani Bio? I think I'm going to go Peters for Edge. Let's give ourselves a set piece for it. I know it weakens us at the back post from set pieces, but I think it gives us a chance going forward. And with 15 minutes to go, we'd like to nick it. As we have got a Charlie Edge corner, almost provides the assist. Lever can't quite get there. Edge again back to Kai Edwards, to Edge, to the back post towards Lever. He's up this time. And Charlie Edge off the bench does provide the assist. That's why we want to keep him fit. He's so instrumental with his delivery. And Jacob Lever, the big centre half, got a two-year deal, had a great season. Ben Williams clearly loves him. And so do we, because at the moment... He's given us a great outcome. Let's drop back to balance with five minutes left because we can now just hold on and sit a bit deeper as Lang takes a free kick for Cardiff Met Uni. Roberts intercepts to Roberto. Roberts again got a runner in behind. It's Chris Baker. More attacking than most of the other players in that role. Cieslovic goes down the line. Got three in the middle if he can find them, but he just beats the two strikers. Noble heads clear. Malone gives it to Baker. Quite a game by Malone standard actually and he gives it away again there. And Edwards clears long downfield. Edge intercepts. Malone up to Nick Roberts. Lovely turn to Cody Roberto. Lovely shape on the shot as well. Lots of lovely things going on. But it's just wide to the post. It stays 1-0. But it is a thoroughly deserved victory for Kef and Druids. The perfect warm-up to the Welsh Cup final. A solid defensive display. Another winner in the last half an hour of a match. 
And TNS, do you know what? They've got the better side, but I think we're going to run them close. They're certainly not going to batter us. We'll be back in a minute, though, for our first cup final and our first chance at silverware with Kef and Druids. Let's see if we can get our career off to a great start and maybe attract the attention of a few other clubs. Well, here it is. Cup final time with Kef and Druids to finish our second season. An outside chance at a trophy against the only professional side in the league. TNS have been brilliant. We've not got the worst record in the world against them. They've largely been one goal games either way this season. Of course, we're in good form. We're confident. We've had a really easy run to get here. We faced four of the bottom six in the Welsh Premier League, whereas TNS have played Connors Key in the last round, just as an example. If we have a look, though, very quickly at the youth intake as promised, there are some good candidates here this year. So we've got a two and a half star player who's a right midfielder with five star potential. Slightly weird attribute mix, but better than, than Hin, who we put in the squad a few times this year. And I think next season we'll be involved a bit. Just maybe a little more defensive than I'd like to have. But look at that. Good in the air. Very good free kick taker. Could be crucial for us next season, particularly with Charlie Edge declining and injured a lot. There's also another right winger who's two star, which is Reese Parry. A lot quicker, a lot more determined, but literally no technical ability at this point. And aside from that, there's not a huge amount else. There's one two star striker, Sasha Eriksson, who isn't really quick, but probably as good as Christian Marr or near enough, to be honest. Not as good as Nichols, who we had last year, though. So there's lots of potential again. There are number 10s that are very good, but there's nothing that really stands out immediately. Maybe just Ian Reese popping in next year. The only one who the director of football didn't offer a deal to was Chris Parry. This is the only one who hasn't really got very good potential. So that's the youth intake. Another good one comparatively. Been ranked as a four-star good intake. So two years in a row, the golden generation has been mentioned in the preview and it hasn't quite been delivered. But Andy Turner, got to say, of our staff, he's by far the best at his job. He's got 14 for working with youngsters. He's adaptable. He's disciplined. And his judgment of ability is the same as Ben Williams. So no shocks there. Let's go and get into the Welsh Cup final, though. It's the reason we were all here today. It is a massive game. I'm going to make the two changes back. So Charlie Edge in for Stanton and Roberto in for Cassidy. We only get five subs in the cup final. So I've got to pick one to take off for Mar or gamble on Cassidy being my only backup striker. I was tempted to take Naylor out because he's wanted by other clubs and looks like he will leave. But I think that balance on the bench is probably the best. So against my better judgment, I'm dropping Christian Mar. He scored five goals this season. He's not really had a look in this half of the year and he is declining physically yet again. So our lineup is the same by Charlie Edge and Cody Roberto in. Cassidy and Stanton drop to the bench. We go and face TNS, the best side in Welsh football, the champions, the professional side. Can we get any sort of result? I doubt it, but let's go and find out. And of course, while it's exciting to be in the final, we've not really had a tough test in this campaign yet. Not in the cup anyway. Keston Davis is playing at the back as skipper. Of course, we've mentioned him before. There's Henry Francis, who scored the winner in the last league game, the Arsenal Loney. The QPR youngster, Duke McKenna. The likes of Jack Evans, who was at Pennybont last year at Newport the year before. McManus, a great striker. And then the likes of Moskrow and McLeod on the bench. They could walk into our starting lineup. So Jonathan Grounds has got the experience at the back. I'd expect this to be a difficult game. But no pressure is on us because we are expected to lose heavily. So let's tell the lads to enjoy the occasion. No reaction. Not what we wanted. The bragging rights might be important, but we know we're underdogs here. It's a big crowd for TNS v Kef and Druids. And it's our first trophy of our career. It's possibly up for grabs. An early doors. TNS looking to dominate the midfield with three men. But Lewis gets the cross into the box. Edge back to Roberts. Oh, it's a free kick for offside against Edge, but... If that had been onside and he headed that straight at a keeper, I would have been furious. Nearly 3,000 here for the final. That's a pretty big attendance. Probably bigger than we had in a lot of the banger save last year. And TNS getting their first chance to go forward with grounds. Duke McKenna and McManus play a 1-2. Through ball to Diara, who's broken free in midfield. His shot's just over the bar. It's a cracking effort, but we're holding out. No shots just yet, but we're still in the game and that's all that matters. As we're back with TNS on the right-hand side again. Baker, the man surging forward. Kai Edwards can clear it away. Roberts gets up, but Henry Francis wins it. To Diara, to Brovel. Lots of quality on the right wing. Gets to the byline. Three in the middle. McManus, one of them. Deflects into his path via the defender. 
and that's just unfortunate. You can't do a great deal about it. McManus scores. It's a tap-in due to the deflection. And we trail at TNS. We might have to chase the game in the second half. And that's very risky against a side this good. Half-time though, and let's look at the positives. We're not out of this game by any means. We're really scrapping hard. It's only 1-0. And if we can get on the front foot, we might have a chance. Let's tell the lads there's nothing to lose. Again, no reaction. And if we get to the 70-75 minute mark and it's still 1-0, I'll probably go all out. I'll probably go positive, make a couple of changes. And just see if we can have an impact. Try and chase the game. Maybe get extra time against them. But we're putting up a great effort. We are the second best side in Wales this year. But TNS are just too good. There's Brobble in for Keston Davis. And I'm afraid that's probably game over. Let's take off some of the poorer players. So Roberto will be replaced by Cassidy. Cieslovic, have we got a natural sub? I don't think we have. So he'll have to stay on. Vieira can be replaced again. Let's go to the tactical screen, in fact. Bio will come on this time, just so it doesn't get embarrassing. And then at the back... I'd be tempted to bring on Naylor for the cup final, give him a big moment, because Kai Edwards has struggled a bit. So let's do that. Jesse Naylor might be his final appearance, but to be honest, I'm not that disappointed. I would have loved to have won a trophy. But we finished second, and the only side better in this country are TNS. From where we were last year, scrapping against relegation for the first, what, two-thirds of a season. I'm really pleased that we're in this position. It's still only two, the lads are holding their own here. The lack of fitness is really showing. The lack of options on the bench is showing too. As Tommy Scott gathers that, Nick Roberts couldn't be released. And to be fair, he's hit a, a slightly poorer patch at the worst point of the season. Not scored many goals in the last two months, though he's in here. This might make it interesting. Nick Roberts is a great save to tip over. Wonderful work from Tommy Scott in a TNS goal. If we can score from this corner, we'll go for it. As Edge has got a corner kick in swinger. Who's up there? Keston Davis. Cieslovic to Naylor. Oh, that would have been an unlikely scorer. Lewis offside as he chased it in. But TNS now with a free kick 30 yards out. It would be really harsh if they got a third. Because it hasn't been more than a 2-0 game. McLeod's got quality though and it's a great free kick. What can you do about it? The first goal was a deflection. The second goal a bullet header. And the third goal a stunning free kick. We're soundly beaten by TNS. They've risen to the big occasion of the professional team. But we've got a season we should really be proud of. Malone picks it up on the left. Can we get the consolation? Cassidy just over the bar. That would have been nice. Not to be. And TNS will lift the Welsh Cup. The professional side, as you would expect, beat the semi-pro outfit. And unfortunately, we do not get a first trophy of our career. But a second place finish at the Welsh Cup final. There's so much for us to be proud of. So, shall we watch them lift the trophy? I think it's only fair. And then we'll skip ahead and look at the season review. Because TNS, a domestic treble, a fantastic season. And that's the benchmark. That's where we've got to get to. We'll be back next season earlier for Europe. But in the meantime, that's the domestic goal. We'll be back for the season review in a second. And see what might happen this summer. And we finish with the end of season review. No trophy at the bottom, but a remarkable improvement. Considering what, 15 months ago, January 2022, we were heavily linked with being sacked. Now, we look pretty good. The signings this season, Kai Edwards, rock at the back. Really good addition. Cieslovic came into his own after a poor start. Coley, a massive upgrade in goal. Mar, a solid option off the bench when we needed him. Steve Peters, a good like-for-like -like replacement, a left back. And then the January ones, Cassidy, what an addition. Four goals in five starts. He's going to have a big year if he gets him a new contract. And Daniel Malone, the deadline day one from last summer. The one we didn't know we need, but the one we're really enjoying. What a player he's going to be. And I hope if we go to another club saying English non-league or something, that he gets taken with us. Because he's a fabulous player. Let's go and have a look at the season results. We finished second in the league. A far cry from scrapping it out in the bottom half last season. We get an average attendance of over 300, a remarkable increase from last year. We didn't even get that for the fan days last season. Nick Roberts, 26 goals, the competition's top scorer. And we went so long unbeaten, didn't we? That Haverford West game was a disappointment. But as we predicted, once we got past Christmas, we got into that top league split playing the top sides. We lost four of them out of 10. And then also the fact that TNS didn't have Europe. They were able to play once a week. And they're by far the best side when they do it. You can see that for sure. We struggled with Connors Key in individual games, but we seem to be more consistent than them. I know we got to the Welsh Cup final, a great achievement. 
but it was an easy run. We played four bottom half sides and we're probably not ever going to get that again. But TNS just too good in the final. And the League Cup, we had to let go, but that's an unfortunate consequence. The key biggest win this season was a 7-2 victory at Lynette. Four goals for Roberts in that game. A match to remember was a 4-0 win against them in the Welsh Cup, which was, of course, the first game in that run to the final. Then goal of the season was from Daniel Malone. We saw that on camera, didn't we? The first episode back in the new year. What was it, two episodes ago? As he scored a brilliant effort from 30 yards. His first and only one for the club so far. The finances are okay. The reputation hasn't changed. Everything's going up, though. We're taking Kef and Druids forward, and I just hope they can go from strength to strength. But the truth is, I'd be disappointed if we don't start getting attention next year, because we've done as good a job as we possibly can. We're going to be playing in the first European qualifier, and surely someone's got to look and take note of what we're doing here. Fingers crossed the third season will be the one we get a job. But that was a pretty good season for me. I'm worried about the summer because, of course... We've got three or four key players out of contract and a very small squad tied down for next year. The wanted players is a big concern as well. They're all on amateur contracts. They can walk if they want. However, we've doubted Ben Williams before and he's always delivered. So I'm not going to let him go just yet. Fingers crossed he'll have a big summer. Hopefully we'll have a big European game next time we're back. If you're looking forward to it and you did enjoy this season, please do put a thumbs up on the video. We're finishing in the nick of time because my voice is disintegrating. We were runners up in the Welsh Cup, of course, to TNS. And the same in the Welsh Premier League too. Lots of progress, lots to look forward to. If you want to stay up to date and make sure you don't miss any of the action in the European qualifiers or in a transfer window courtesy of a director of football, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We're on the beta schedule for the rest of this week as long as the voice holds up. 3.30 for the head coach, 11.30am for Hemel Hempstead. And then next week, one video a day at half three, as well as a few other specials too. You can catch up with anything you've missed and the live streams from Twitch over in the eye above. But a massive thank you for watching your continued support with another season. Massive progress, massive strides in Wales, but a big summer ahead for Kef and Druids and for me. I'll see you next time to find out how it's gone. <laughs>